Things have changed. I'm not in the sun. I'm not next to the water. I'm not swimming. I'm not going down water slides. I don't have food everywhere that's free that I could just pick up and is made for me and is served to me. Uh, now, if I have alcohol every day, I'm just a bum instead of a vacationer. Yeah, cruising may have ruined my life because now I know what my life really is. Thanks, Don. Thanks for bringing me on a cruise, Don. I was more than happy before I went on the cruise, Don. And now I know what my life is. Well, instead of dwelling on it, why don't we think of the happy times? Yeah, the happy times. Well, the food was great, but you know what was even better than the food? The staff. The staff was amazing. Like, my wife kept on coming back. She goes on these cruises with Uncle Don because she's a travel agent. She works for him. And she says, hey, you know what? The people are the best people in the world. They're incredible. And I said, oh, that's nice. They, yeah, people are generally, generally nice. And she says, no, you don't understand. They are super nice. I said, okay, whatever. And guess what? Trust your wife. They were super nice. I've never met nicer people. Mark? Don? No, these people were awesome. Epic. Uh, let's start with Maria. She was our room steward. She was the first person we saw. We got to our room. She greeted us. She was all nice and happy and laughing and smiling. I did a joke. She laughed at my joke. Our rooms were cleaned four times a day. Or I step out of my room, I come back, it's clean. That's magical. And uh, I, I'm walking down the, the hallway one day, and I don't know how many rooms she cleans, but she said, good morning, Paul. How, how did she remember my name on the spot like that? That is amazing. Maria, I miss you already. Maria, unfortunately, had uh, a tooth problem, and she had to disappear for a couple of days. But when she came back, it was like sunshine and rainbows. The next staff was at the Izumi restaurant. And Don, Don got us that for lunch one day because uh, everything else was booked. So we had to do lunch instead of dinner. And this is a Japanese inspired place. Like there's a, a, a samurai suit at the front and there's like swords. And we walked in and were greeted by Miyagi. And no kidding, that's how he introduced himself. I'm not making that up just because it's a Japanese restaurant. So Miyagi seated us he, he, and he was always smiling and really nice because he knew what was going to come and he knew what we were in for. And, uh, and then Pierre. Pierre made an appearance, the Japanese chef from South Philly named Pierre. Anyway, this guy was, he's like chopping and flipping knives like he's Tom Cruise in the cocktail movie and uh, throwing food across the, the room right into Don's mouth. You've seen that video a million times. That'll go viral because that's just so epic. And uh, uh, he's singing, he's dancing, and he, he's and, and the food that he served me, it was just incredible, that chicken and the beef, and the flavors I had never tasted before, it was, and uh, he, he would do his little choppy thing, and he'd serve everybody exactly what they ordered, and then he'd have some left over, so he's just giving you stuff that you didn't even order, like here, I'll put this on your plate, there, I'll put that on your plate, that was amazing, it was awesome, I was getting so stuffed with delicious food, like, but I'm going to have to dock some points off of uh, Pierre because, like, at the end, he put a piece of lobster or shrimp on my plate. And I don't want to eat some kind of water bug. That's, that's not what I do. But then uh, I would just normally leave it there. But Christy and Don were... Oh, wait. Sorry. I'll keep you anonymous, Christy. Christine and Don were looking at me kind of evaluating my manhood challenging it uh, so I kind of had to eat it and 
I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my chicken and beef, thanks. Uh, so, on the whole, Pierre and Miyagi, top marks except for that little last piece there. Get that off my plate. And then our first dinner specialty dining experience was like at this Jamie Oliver's Italian restaurant. Jamie! And uh, our server was Juan. Juan was a great guy, always smiling, he's friendly, told us his uh, backstory, where he came from, a uh, little bit about his family. I wanted him to sit with us, but I'm kind of glad he didn't, because Don and Mark don't know how to use their inside voices, and they're degenerates, and the kind of jokes that they were saying were kind of offensive, and I think Juan was crying on the inside. Uh, and, like, he's a trooper, he kept smiling. Like, great, he made me think that everything was okay. But I'm pretty sure Mark and Don were just making him cringe. Uh, and like, even throughout the cruise, like, we would be at the stage play and they would use their outdoor voices to say a joke. And I'm pretty sure one was crying in the background. That happened several times, I think. Anyway, one's tears aside, uh, one served me up this awesome drink called a Miami Vice. And I think it's like a strawberry daiquiri mixed with a pina colada. And I don't drink. I have maybe one drink a year with my dad, a beer in the summertime. Uh, and I'm reconsidering my life choices now that I had the Miami Vice, because that was delicious, like stunningly delicious. Now, I think the most epic restaurant, other than Azumi, may have been Chop Steakhouse. Uh, here we had Roland as our server, and uh, Roland was a great guy. Uh, the second time we went, it was Weesem. And Weesem, all he cared about was being better than Roland. He wanted to be super better than Roland. Like, that's all he talked about. He says, I just got to beat that guy. If I beat that guy, my life is complete. And so that's a great situation as a customer because he's doing everything he can to be the best. And uh, yeah, that was fantastic. Except when we left, I think they may have gotten into a knife fight. And sorry, Weesem. I think Rollin might have won that one. Uh, but my hero at uh, Chops was uh, a guy named Lutz or Lutz. He was the drink guy. He came around. He says, hey, what do you want to drink tonight? And since Don is a diamond member, uh, he has these uh, four drinks or something a day that he can charge to his account. And so I said, okay, well, for my drink today, I'm going to have, hmm, Lutz, give me the girliest drink you can give me. Like, something that would have a million umbrellas in it. He says, well, we don't have umbrellas. I said, whatever would normally have a million umbrellas in it, that's the drink that I want. He says, okay, I gotcha. I gotcha covered. And uh, he went back and he brought me something. I said, so what's this called? And he says, it doesn't even have a name. We created it just for you. I said, oh, man. So I took a drink of this. And it was like liquid candy with a bite. Oh. Lutz, Lutz, I want to marry you. And that was the first time we went to Chops. When we went back to Chops a couple of days later, I said, Sir, bring me the girliest drink you can give me. And he says, Oh yeah, I remember you. And so he said, Don't worry, leave it with me. And he went and he brought back this other drink that they invented just for me. I invented two drinks on this cruise. So, oh, that was amazing. Liquid candy, I tells ya. The next restaurant was, I think it was called Park 150. This is the man. This is the man, and he's not wearing a name tag, so I can't remember his name, which is unfortunate. Because tonight, I was thinking, you know what? Mark and Don are always ordering, like, rum and coke. That's kind of, like, manly. Christy, I mean, Christine, kept on ordering a Manhattan... And she loved her whiskey. And whiskey is like, whiskey is like three times more manly than a rum and coke. And here I am ordering girly drinks. I say, well, I got to step up. I got to re-alpha myself. So I turn to Mr. Park and I say, Mr. Park, I need a manly drink. What's a manly drink? And we thought a moment. I said, what does James Bond drink? He, dr he drinks a martini shaken, not stirred. Can you do that for me, Mr. Park? He says... Uh, no problem. And he comes back. He rolls a whole station to me. A whole station. And there's like 
all these different kitchen stuff on there and he's he got a mortar and pestle and he's crushing herbs and he's mixing stuff and he's shaking the ice thing and then he's pouring it in my there's garnishes and he didn't do this for everybody else no no this was my drink so mr park that was awesome i got a drink performance uh yeah so uh i'm really sorry i can't remember your name but I think that drink is kind of what re-energized my my manliness. Like when I I needed to step up. Like even Christy. Christy's always getting this Manhattan. She loves her whiskey. And then one time it came in this like long neck dainty cup and she almost she almost flipped. She almost wrecked the place. What's this? What's this? No, no, that's how it comes here. She's like, oh, okay, okay. It better still be like regular hard stuff. Oh yeah, 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 it's good. So, yeah. I had to compete with that. When we went to the Mexican-inspired restaurant, Sabor, um, there was some good food there. Our, 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 sir, I had a burrito. <laughs> it was an epic burrito. Oh, my gosh. Uh, our server was Honorio. Honorio. Anyway, this guy was so cool. Like, I want him to be my best friend. I was about to kick Mark out of the room and said, Hey, Honorio, you come stay with me. Uh... He uh, helped me out. While Mark, Don, and Christine were getting these pansy little sugar-rimmed frozen strawberry margaritas, I said, Honorio, I can't do that. I have to one-up them. He says, well, you are twice the man that Christine is, at least, and probably three times more manly than Mark and Don put together. So why don't you have a super handcrafted signature salt rimmed margarita off our specialty menu and i said that's exactly what i want and we laughed and we pointed at dawn and and laughed some more and then we fist bumped i was the only one who got a, a bro fist bump it was it was like we were meant to be together thanks honorio thank you now there were a, a few other uh people i want to i want to mentioned because they were just so awesome too even though we didn't develop the long-lasting friendship like the other folks we still had a great time being served from them uh donna at johnny rockets like it was it was only a, like a little hamburger hot dog place but she was so friendly and laughing and and we changed our order a million times and she took it with grace she got me an extra chair thanks donna and then there was jenny poor jenny oh Wonderland Restaurant is is kind of a weird place where there's a story that comes along with every course and she had to stand there and and blurt out this memorized story for every course that we ate and like that must have been that must have been hard good for you Jenny for getting through that and then there was Milan we went back to the Italian restaurant and uh uh it wasn't uh, Juan Juan would wouldn't service us anymore. I, I think when we walked in, he ran to the bathroom and started crying. Um, but Milan, he was awesome. And he brought me a second helping of the greatest lasagna I ever tasted in my life. No kidding. Jamie's Italian restaurant on Harmony of the Seas has the greatest lasagna in the world. Okay? That's all I got to say about that. And, uh, of course, there was Hannah at the rock wall. So, I can see how this video turned into a uh, story of my developing alcoholism. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I'm back in Ottawa. It's minus four. There's ice on my car. The grocery store shelves are empty. There's nothing I want to eat there because it's all processed garbage. Um, thanks, Don. Your cruise ruined my life. <laughs>